Boeing has announced that it recently conducted an experiment together with the US Navy in which an EA-18G growler controlled two other EA-18Gs flying missions semi-autonomously. The company stated that the aircraft operated from Naval Air Station Patuxent River and the trial run was carried out as part of the Navy Warfare Development Command's annual Fleet Experiment Flex, exercises. Boeing did not reveal the exact date when this was conducted. The flights were intended to prove that F-A-18 Super Hornets and EA-18G Growlers can effectively run combat missions using unmanned systems. This opens the door for many new prospects, manned aircraft working together with unmanned ones in combat and even a future pilotless avatar of current manned aircraft flying independently. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why demo flight of semi-autonomous EA-18G Growler aircraft is one of the most important developments of recent times. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft or ship and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. Area Denial and Anti-Access systems deny U.S. forces the ability to come within hundreds or even thousands of miles of an enemy's territory. Today, these high-end capabilities are being developed and deployed by countries like China and Russia, but they'll soon be available to others as well. These capabilities include advanced integrated air defense systems with long-range engagement capabilities able to target and shoot down aircraft from hundreds of miles away as well as increasingly capable ballistic missiles that can put America's fixed installations and even U.S. carrier strike groups at risk throughout an entire region. A country with a strong ADA-2 capability has basically created an invisible fortress wall that can be pushed out thousands of miles from its territorial borders. For example, Russia has developed S-400 Triumph, which is considered to be one of the most difficult systems to negotiate for an aircraft. The S-400 is an anti-aircraft weapon system developed in the 1990s by Russia's Almaz Central Design Bureau as an upgrade of the S-300 family. It's been in service with the Russian Armed Forces since 2007. The system has a tracking range of around 600 kilometers or around 370 miles and can intercept targets 400 kilometers or 250 miles away. These kinds of systems are a major threat for fourth-generation aircraft and can even make things difficult for the fifth-generation ones. One of the most effective ways to counter air defense systems is to employ electronic warfare, and this is where Growler comes into the picture. EA-18G Growler is a specialized version of the two-seat F-18 Super Hornet for electronic warfare. The EA-18G replaced the Northrop Grumman EA-6B Prowlers in service with the United States Navy. The Growler's electronic warfare capability is primarily provided by Northrop Grumman. The EA-18G began production in 2007 and entered operational service with the U.S. Navy in late 2009. The Growler has more than 90% components in common with the standard Super Hornet, sharing airframe, Raytheon AN-APG-79 AESA radar and weapon systems such as the AN-AYK-22 store management system. Most of the dedicated airborne electronic attack equipment is mounted on a plate in the space that used to house the internal 20mm cannon and on the wingtips. Nine weapon stations remain free to provide for additional weapons or jamming pods. The added electronics include AN-ALQ-218 wideband receivers on the wingtips and ALQ-99 high and low-band 
tactical jamming pods. The ALQ-218 combined with the ALQ-99 forms a full-spectrum electronic warfare suite that is able to provide detection and jamming against all known surface-to-air threats. The EA-18G can be fitted with up to five ALQ-99 jamming pods and will typically add two AIM-120 AMRAAM or AGM-88 harm missiles. Growler has a range of 1,275 nautical miles or 2,746 kilometers and a combat radius of 390 nautical miles or 722 kilometers. Tom Brandt, Boeing's manned unmanned teaming demonstration lead, said in a statement, This demonstration allows Boeing and the Navy the opportunity to analyze the data collected and decide where to make investments in future technologies. It could provide synergy with other U.S. Navy unmanned systems in development across the spectrum and in other services. He added, This technology allows the Navy to extend the reach of sensors while keeping manned aircraft out of harm's way. It's a force multiplier that enables a single aircrew to control multiple aircraft without greatly increasing workload. It has the potential to increase survivability as well as situational awareness. Boeing states that the experiment consisted of a total of four flights, during which the three EA-18Gs performed 21 demonstration missions in total. As per reports, Pilots were on board the two growlers that flew semi-autonomous during the experiments and mainly took care of takeoffs and landings and otherwise acting as backups in case of system failures. It's unclear what kind of mission was executed as part of the experiment. It's likely that they may have involved simulated electronic warfare sorties against mock threats. The main objective seems to be to validate the capability of manned EA-18G to direct and coordinate the activities of the other two semi-autonomous aircraft. The U.S. is not the only one thinking along these lines. The Russian Defense Ministry announced last year that Russia's latest heavy attack drone, Akotnik, meaning Hunter, has performed its first flight with the Su-57 fighter jet. The ministry said, the Akotnik unmanned aerial vehicle has performed its first joint flight with a fifth-generation Su-57 plane. It was reported that the flight was conducted in the automated mode. The ministry stated that, as part of the ongoing test program, the Akotnik drone performed a flight in the automated mode in its full configuration, entering the airborne alert area. The ministry added that during the flight, the drone and the Su-57 fighter practiced interaction to broaden the fighter's radar coverage and to provide target acquisition for employing air-launched weapons. U.S. Navy operates 10 Nimitz-class supercarriers and is in the process of inducting Ford-class supercarriers, so it's clear that American supercarriers will be operating in the foreseeable future. Each of these can carry more than 60 aircraft, and one of the most important components of the flight group is the EA-18G Growlers. Linking the jets together with small groups of unmanned platforms with their own sensors and electronic warfare packages will significantly enhance the operational flexibility. This demonstration means that in the future, U.S. Navy could deploy the unmanned Growlers in risky airspaces to clear the path for manned ones as well as other fighters and bombers. It's important to note that the U.S. Navy, along with industry partners like Northrop Grumman, is developing small drones carrying electronic warfare equipment that can be deployed in swarm mode, which the EA-18Gs could deploy using modified air-launched canisters. This means that a group of manned and unmanned EA-18G could someday work together and deploy hundreds of these drones to confuse and distract hostile air defenses. This will be a significant step towards countering modern, integrated, highly capable air defenses. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.